So you're either an architect or an architecture student looking for a laptop in what I'll call late 2020, early 2021. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, on this channel we review technology and talk about all things architecture related. If that's something that interests you, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and let's get on with today's video. Today we're talking about the best five laptops for architects and architecture students in 2020. Now, I haven't put a budget on these products because of the simple fact when you purchase a laptop for architectural purposes, chances are you're gonna need to spend a little bit more than you think, especially if you want them to be able to cover all the programs and all the different software that you're gonna be more than likely running throughout your career. Now, before we begin, it is in my personal opinion that laptops in an architectural profession do not last or keep up with technology for more than three to five years. So after three to five years, you're more than likely going to have to update your system and either sell your old one, get a new one, or figure out how to be able to upgrade to the latest and greatest technology. That's because technology moves at such a rapid pace that it will leave you behind and you will not be productive with an outdated machine. So with that being said, let's get into my top five laptops for architects in 2020 in no particular order. Number one is the Microsoft Surface Laptop 3. It's the product you see behind me and it is my personal laptop of choice. However, to be able to run this machine on all accounts that you need to be using it, you're gonna to need to spec it out, which means an i7 processor, 212 gigabytes of storage at a minimum, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. The reason I've selected the Surface Laptop 3 over the Surface Book 3 is predominantly for price. I've again selected the Surface Laptop 3 over the Surface Pro X for the simple fact that the Surface Pro X has a mobile chipset inside it and doesn't have the graphics capabilities to run programs like ArchiCAD, Revit, Rhino, 3ds Max, or any other rendering software you might think of. So this machine behind me will set you back approximately 2,699 Australian dollars, or the equivalent of 1,889 US dollars. So that isn't exactly a cheap laptop to be purchasing. However, I've had this device for a year and a bit now. The Surface 4 is about to come out in this month, if not sooner. So it is definitely a good time to be buying this towards the end of the year. The Surface Laptop 2 as well is a phenomenal device. I've used that in the past. It is able to handle pretty much anything you throw at it. It does render a little bit slower than the desktop behind me does, but that's expected being a mobile laptop device. Moving on to the competition, the Apple MacBook Pro. This is the second laptop in the top five category at no particular order. The unfortunate thing with Apple products is if you are planning on running Revit, you're gonna need a virtual machine or some way to run Windows on your computer. If you're running ArchiCAD, then you're all set basically from the get-go. Max, in my personal experience, I use one at work to run ArchiCAD and they are phenomenal. There is no issues running ArchiCAD on a Mac computer as long as you get the right computer from the start. So for example, the product behind me, if you wish to use it for architectural purposes, you're gonna need to get the two gigahertz quad processor version with a minimum of 512 gigabytes of storage. If you do need more storage on any of these devices, I always recommend OneDrive because I tend to use a lot of Word, Excel documents, and the sorts, which can be quickly and easily accessed on all tablets and all devices and edited as well. The MacBook Pro is a little bit more expensive than the Surface laptop, and it comes in at 2,999 Australian dollars, or the equivalent of 2,199 US dollars. Now for the simple fact that I have both of these machines directly behind me for you guys, to interpret and view in this video, I think deserves a quick smash of that like button to help this video with the YouTube algorithm. Third on the list is the Dell XPS 13 inch model. Now this one has its pros and cons. Like the Surface Laptop 3, it has an i7 processor, 512 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Unfortunately, it has a shared graphics card. Having said this, it can definitely do the job 
but the materials and the quality of the device are a little bit lackluster considering its 3,399 Australian dollar price tag. This is equivalent to approximately 2,420 USD. For that money, you basically get a plastic shell, whereas with both of the devices behind me, you get a nice unibody aluminium case that is robust, rugged, and feels like absolute quality. For both of these devices being cheaper than the Dell XPS, again, I'd pick one of these two over the Dell, hands down any day. Now we're moving up into the world to the more CAD workstation purpose-built computers. These are, in my personal opinion, not the prettiest things, but they do the job and they do the job very, very well. I'm gonna read this one straight off my iPad because being an MSI, it has a very long name. Number four on the list is the MSI WP65 10th-1210 AU. I know, tongue twister. The benefits of this device over the rest is the simple fact that it has a 15.6 inch screen. None of the other devices listed so far have been able to compare in that department. However, personally speaking, I find the 13 inch screen more than enough for the time to time that you need to use a laptop. Most of the time you will be working off a desktop. So it is always advisable to get a custom built desktop and then a supplementary laptop if you can afford both of them. The MSI features also a shock horror of an i7 processor, 512 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. This is a purpose built CAD machine so you'll get some better processing power on the technical side of things and on the rendering aspects when you need it. However, it still will not be able to compete with a desktop, so don't go presuming just because that it is a CAD machine purpose-built that you're gonna get those sorts of specs out of it. It doesn't matter if you go and spend 10 grand on a laptop, it's still not gonna be able to compete with a purpose-built top-of-the-range desktop. Besides the fact this device has a 2,899 Australian dollar price tag, or approximately 2,100 USD, it is extremely chunky, extremely clunky, and weighs a ton. I wouldn't really personally wanna be lugging it around in my backpack all day, every day, especially as a uni student, where you already have a whole bunch of stuff that you need to carry all the time. So this is a great computer if you're looking at using it as a workstation, potentially as a supplementary to the desktop, if not your primary, but it isn't exactly the most ideal travel companion. Now, the fifth and final is the most expensive by far and it is the ThinkPad X390 Yoga. This device is a convertible two-in-one touchscreen device that has a whole bunch of features that everything else does as well. Just like the rest of the devices, it has an i7 processor, 512 gigabytes of storage, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. The added benefit of the 512 storage here is a solid state drive, which if you don't know what a solid state drive does, Basically, it loads everything significantly quicker than the old school drives. It also incorporates 65 watt fast charging through a USB-C outlet and has a very corporate design we'll go with. I guess because in the last company I worked for, everybody had a ThinkPad. It was the standard issue across the board and they were okay. They were the intro models, they definitely weren't this and I personally wasn't a fan of their design. But hey the design isn't everything this device is able to handle anything you need from revit to archicad once you start getting into some very large scale projects with some demanding objects inside them you're probably going to see some shortfalls in all of these devices but out of all of these devices i think the thinkpad and the msi are definitely going to be able to stand up to most of what you throw at it Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it gave you some insight into what laptop you should be looking at purchasing as either an architect or an architecture student in 2020. If you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button down below to help this video grow with the algorithm and hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more of these videos. Thanks so much for watching and as always, I'll see you next Monday.